and hit record and do this. Nice. Looks like you're into trig. Uh, yep, we are. Uh, this is a simple problem, actually. Uh, let me blow this up just a little so we can read it. Okay. So the incline is 800 feet long. And it has an angle of elevation that's 30 degrees. Okay. They want to know what that height is. Well, this is what's 800 down there. Right. Sokatoa. Remember this. What trig function is going to allow me to answer what y is? Um, well, what we would use... What trig function relates y to the number 800? Um, so that would be opposite over adjacent. Very good. What trig function is that? Um, opposite over uh, tangent. Okay. When you're solving these trig problems, always try to start with the trig. That's the way you want to start the equation. Okay. Always tan or sine or cosine or whatever trig function you've realized you have to use. Mm -hmm. And what's the rest of it? Tan of what equals what? Um, so tan is equal to no, y over 800. Tan of an angle. You're always taking trig functions of angles. Okay. So it's tan. Oh, so tan of 30. 30. Okay. Equals y over 800. Okay. Y equals 800 times the tan of 30. Go ahead and get that number out of your calculator, and that'll be your answer. Okay. Cool. Do you want me to go get my? Oh, do you want me to do that right now? Let me go get. Yeah. Okay. Let me go grab it real fast. Hold okay. on. Okay. You did say 43 was the one you had to do, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. So you want 800 okay. times the tan of 30. Okay. Let me try to find it on the calculator. I haven't used uh, tan and all that on it. Do you have a TI-84, Dylan? Uh, I have a TI-Inspire. Okay. That has a trig key on it. Notice. Does it? Uh-huh, lower left. It says trig, right below the control key. It it's, says trig. Yeah, hit that trig key. Um, let me see. You said lower left? Oh, uh, there it is. Right yeah. below the control key. There it is. Okay. Okay, now when you hit the trig key, it pops open 12 different options. All mm -hmm. six trig functions and all six inverse trig functions. Yeah. So hit the tan. Okay. And Got then that. And thirty and inside the parentheses that it pops open. Okay. Got and it. Multiply that by eight hundred. Okay. You could actually. I got. Oh yeah. In once, but what is it? Uh, minus five thousand one hundred twenty-four. All right. It's not a minus. Do it this way. Do 800 times the tan of, are you in degrees or are you possibly in radians? Uh, I'm in degrees. You're positive? Yeah. Do the sine of 30. Tell me what you get. The sine of 30? Uh-huh. Uh, let me do that. That'll tell you for sure whether you're in radians or degrees. Negative 0.988. You're in radians. Am I? So, okay, so I got to go. 30, the sine of 30 is one half. That's one you should okay. remember always. That's a okay. good standard to remember. The sine of 30 degrees is one half. Because okay. then, for one thing, you can always tell what your calculator's in. 
because right. the calculators are not very good at showing you whether you're in degrees or radians, and in fact, the Inspire is fairly tough to switch. Yeah, for sure. You know how to switch it? Um, so you go to settings, and then um, documents. What would be under documents? Settings? It's harder to switch on the TI-84 than it is on the... Um, TI Inspire. I, I'm sorry, on the Inspire it's harder oh. than it is on the TI-84. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see, how do you do it? Um, Maybe... I think you, know. you got to get back to settings. I think you were on the right course. Yeah. The settings. Mm -hmm. God. Yeah. What the heck? How can it be so hard to switch from degrees to radians? I've run into this problem before. Uh, oh, I know. And it's not easy. Oh, the guy. Oh, got it. You got it? Yep. How do you so know? you go to document settings. Oh, so you go that to makes document no sense. settings. Okay. Yeah, then change that to... Okay. Ah, change it to radi or degrees, and you had it. Your angle is in radians. Yep. So change it was. It to degrees. Yep. So then go back. Go to I'll take the sine of thirty. Sine of thirty. Okay. Let me do that. Sine of thirty. I still got it. So negative. Not negative zero point. Okay, go back, go back to your yeah. settings. And make sure you're in degrees and save it. It may not have registered your your change. Weird. It. it didn't. Yeah. yeah. I'm not make def yeah, maybe the, make default. Um, no, because you're gonna want to switch back and forth as long as you're doing trig. You just want to know how to do it and how to tell what it's in. Right. So I would. Okay, say, now it's in. You got okay, it. Okay, it's in. Yep, it says it is. So let's go back. Thirty. Yep. You get one half. You're in degrees. So get it. What the heck? Okay, let me do it on mine. Okay. That's weird. It keeps yeah, it keeps changing back to radian. Oh, but you got to go to document settings. What a terrible way to. Let's see how hard it is if I switch to radians. Ah, oh, it does. Oh, you got to go. Up? No, oh, I can't get mine on radians. What's going I, on? I can't either. Yeah. What the heck? This is weird. It is weird. Um. Let's maybe. Try maybe enter. have to enter. No. Huh? Let I me try this. Settings. Document mm -hmm. settings. And if I just go down... Got it. Oh, got it. How'd you get it? So you, just, you have to say make default. Really? Yep. Oh, I see. How, how do you even get down to the default? I can't get down to the default key. You can? I can't. Huh. When I so, hit the, the down arrow... Oh, well. As long as you got yeah, it. When I, when I do it, yeah, I, you just have to keep going all the way down. Okay. And then, so you're in degrees. Now yep. uh, take sine of 30. Yep, I got 0. 0.500. Okay, cool. Now take 800 times the tangent of 30. Okay. Let me the answer that. to this problem. So 800 times the tangent of 30. Should be about 500, yep. maybe. I got, yeah, 461.880. And they want you to round it off to the nearest hundreds? Yeah, so 462. Okay. Now, I noticed that the only one they gave you was 43. Mm -hmm. And that's because all the other questions on here have to do with speed. The right. Speed of the cable cars, which is a whole other problem involved. They okay. aren't concerned about that. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's next after 43? Okay. So after 43, it is, uh, let me see. Hold on. Next page? Uh, 40, yeah, 45 through 51. No, I got 45 on this. I guess you got 40. Yeah, I guess 45 is on this page. All right. 
All right, we got a ski slope. Okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. As an angle of elevation of 25 degrees. That has to be that angle right there, 25.2 degrees. Yeah. Could only be this angle or this angle, and that's never an angle of elevation. It's always measured from the horizon uh -huh. or from the level. Okay? Right. Okay. And the vertical height of the slope is 1808. So mm -hmm. how long is the ski slope? What is X? Okay. Let me now, see. Figure out, before you figure out anything, figure out which trig function you're going to use. Uh, yeah, so you'd use um, opposite over hypotenuse. Which is? Um, so, OH, ah. so... Yeah, so that'd be a uh, sine. Okay, so tell me the equation I want to write. So you would use sine of 25.2 is equal to y over 1808. No. Or 1808 over y. Opposite over the hypotenuse. Yeah, so 1808 over y. No, 18, okay. If you're calling the... Or x, length, my bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now to solve this in your calculator, you know how to solve that for x? Yep. Yeah. It's equal to one eighteen oh eight divided by sine of twenty five point two. So. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Well, now hold on. The fact that you asked that, let's. Go back and yeah, I had, I had the sine of 25.2 equals mm -hmm. 1808 divided by x. Right. So to solve for x, what's the first step I got to do? Multiply. By x. Right. So I get x sine gotcha. 25.2 okay. equals 1808. Mm -hmm. X equals this number divided by sine 25.2. So whatever oh. that is, is your answer. Yeah, I got 4,246.331. And that kind of makes sense. If it you does. Yeah. In other words, if the slope is 1,808 feet high, then the length of the slope, figures to be higher, more than that, right? Right. I mean, you're a exactly. skier. You've skied, right? Uh, I have, yeah. The length of the slope is always higher than the mountain because it's mm -hmm. at an angle. Right. So we would expect the number to be higher than 1808, and it is. So 4,000 makes sense. It's a ballpark. Mm -hmm. It does make sense. Correct answer. All right. Yeah. Cool. What's the next one, 46? Yep. Let me do it this way. Yeah. Use my new little toy here. Okay. A gang plant is a narrow ramp used for boarding or leaving a ship. Maximum safe angle is 20 degrees. Okay, there's our gang plant. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me write it so you can see it. Yeah. Here's our gang plan. There's the mm -hmm. ship. Yep. Okay. And the, when they say the maximum safe angle is 20 degrees, uh -huh. in other words, if that was any more than 20 degrees, people might fall down that gang plan. Right. You wouldn't want it to be 80 degrees for sure. No. So that's why there's a maximum safe angle. Now, okay. suppose the gang plant is 10 feet long. That's that measurement right there, 10 feet. Okay. Right? It's not the horizontal measurement. No. It's the length of the gang plant. And the mm -hmm. gang plank goes from there to there. So it's mm -hmm. the hypotenuse of this triangle. Now, what is the closest a ship can come to the dock for the gang plant 
to be used? Well, it's a bad question because it doesn't presume that it's 20 degrees, but what they're asking for is this measurement, right? X. Um, it, right. That's how close the ship can come. Mm -hmm. Because they've got a 10-foot gangplank. Well, that, that gangplank is longer than how close they're going to be able to come to the shore. They're right. not going to be able to get within 10 feet because then the gangplank would be too long. Mm -hmm. That's a really silly question. You don't That's care if it's yeah. Well, you don't care if it's too long. No, not at all. What? It'll, it'll, too it'll too overhang. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, clearly, this problem is meant to solve that triangle. That's all you're doing for X. Okay. Okay. What trig function is going to let me solve that for X? Yeah, so we would do adjacent over hypotenuse. Which trig function is that? Um, adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be uh, cosine. Okay, that's good. You're doing this exactly correct. Cool. In other words, figuring out that it's adjacent over hypotenuse. And mm -hmm. then make the next leap into knowing that that's cosine. So what's right. the equation? So it would be cosine 20 is equal to, um, so it's x over 10. Which means x is merely 10 times the cosine of 20. In other words, it's much easier to solve for x if it's in the numerator, as you can tell. Yeah, I, if x is in the denominator, then I got to multiply by x and divide by whatever's on the other side. But if x is in the numerator, I just got to multiply by whatever number is in the denominator. Okay. So what's 10, ten times cosine of 20? Okay, so 10, hold on. Uh, 9.397. 9.397. That close? Really? Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, that makes sense now that I think about it. Cosine of zero is one. So uh -huh. the cosine of a small angle is going to be pretty close to one. Right. Although, that close? 0.93? All right. I guess so, yeah. I'll take your word for it. Um, what's the next one we're supposed to do? Uh, 47. Okay. Okay, so here there's a building in China. Mm -hmm. You're standing 75 meters from the base. So you're standing right there. That distance is 75 meters. Okay. You estimate that the angle of elevation to the top of the building mm -hmm. is 80. Right. What is the height of the building? In other words, here you are solving for y. I, I use x and y. I usually use y for verticals mm -hmm. and x is for horizontals because that's what we're used to. Right. So what trig function are you going to use? Um, so we're doing opposite over adjacent. Um, so it would be uh, tangent. Okay. So it'd be tangent of 80, or tan of 80, is equal to y over 75. Okay, that's correct. Uh, I noticed there was a second part to this. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I guess that that's is, okay. Uh, What's y equal to? Um, so y is equal to... 75 yeah. times tan of 80? Yeah, so it'd be... Y is equal to um, 80 over 75. No, it's there. 75 times the tan of 80. So it'd be 70. Okay, right, right, right. I'll do that in your calculator. Yeah. I have no idea what the tan of 80 is. No, me neither. <laughs> um, 425.346. Okay, well, that makes sense. You've got a tall building, you're only 75 meters away, mm -hmm. so that angle would be 80 degrees. And now, mm -hmm. you have a friend at the top of the building. Right. Right there. Mm -hmm. How far is your friend from you? 
So... What trig function are you going to use? So we're trying to find the top now? No. Or the hypotenuse? We're trying to find... Exactly. We're trying to find the distance between you and your friend. Right. That distance is the hypotenuse. Okay. So... Um, In other words, we're trying to solve for Z. So first thing right. you have to ask yourself is, what trig function am I going to use? Yeah, exactly. Um, Which one can you use? What do we use um, adjacent over hypotenuse? That's what I would use. You could also use sine, uh -huh. because we now know the height of the building. So we now know the opposite also. Mm -hmm. But that 425 may have been rounded off, right? Right. So let's use one that we know is not rounded off, the 75. Mm -hmm. So give me the equation. Okay, so it would be all right, all right, adjacent of hypotenuse, so it would be um, type brain fart, tangent. So we would use... Uh -huh. Not tangent. Or not tangent, cosine, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it'd be uh, cosine of seventy five or z over seventy five. Seventy five over z. Cosine of eighty. Remember, Z you're always taking trig functions of angles, not ratios. Okay. You take inverse trig functions of ratios to get angles. Mm -hmm. But if we're taking a trig function of something, it's an angle. Okay. Always. So okay. your trig function always needs to be followed by an angle. Okay. And then that's equal to what? Um, and then so let me write it in a calculator. So okay. it would be uh, 75 times cosine of 80. Hold on. Don't do two steps right. in one. What's the cosine of 80 equal to? A 75 over z. Okay. Yeah. Now, to solve for z, that's going to be 75 over the cosine of 80. Okay. In other words, when you get a situation like that and your variable is in the denominator, well, you can pretty much multiply both sides by that and then divide both sides by that, so you just switch the two. Right. Okay. Cool. All right. I got, I've got an 8.30. Okay. I'm going to let you go, but I think we probably got most of them done anyway. We did. Yeah, yeah definitely. Sweet. All right. I will talk to you next time. Sounds good. Thanks for scouting. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.